Hey, what's up? Rob Arnold here, and today I'm going to be doing some experimenting to see what the differences are between an inexpensive entry-level noise gate and a more higher-end model like the one I use every single time I fire up an amp. First, what is a noise gate or noise reduction or suppression, and do you need it? I'll say that to me, those names are interchangeable. Reduction, suppression, gate, they're all doing the same thing. They're all trying to eliminate noise from some signal. And in this case, everything I'm gonna be discussing today is gonna be focused on a guitar rig. A guitar into an amp. When you fire up a high gain, high output half stack, like a PV amp, and you're plugged directly into the amp, with the output at only two out of 10, like we've got here, which is still crazy loud, it sounds like this. This was my typical stage volume while performing live, which may seem low to you, especially when you picture a big stage and more musicians, but I didn't really rely on hearing myself through the amp. The amp had a mic in front of it, which sent the signal through the PA system out to the audience, as well as to the monitor system on stage so that we, the musicians, could hear everything that was going on. And if I were just jamming alone here in the room or recording the signal, I'd bring that volume you know, down some, maybe like that. If I were jamming with guys in a rehearsal room, I'd have to compete with the drums and the cymbals and the other players. And I might bring that volume up to like three, three and a half, something like that. Regardless, there's going to be a lot of feedback and noise. Okay, so now if I were to insert a noise gate into my signal chain, that would clean everything up. It would get rid of a lot of that sloppy, unwanted feedback. And that's what we're after. And for that, I like the ISB decimator. So we're gonna go straight into the noise suppressor from my guitar, and then directly into the amps input, which you saw over there. By the way, I never run a gate through my effects loop unless I'm running some potentially noisy effects through my loop, in which case I'll add a second noise gate to the loop. But regardless, I'll always run a noise gate in line in front of my amp last in the chain before my signal hits the amp. And to clarify, here's how I recommend you run your signal chain. Let's say you have a tuner, an overdrive, or a chorus, or a wah pedal. So we've got a tuner here. I'm gonna unplug this for the example. We've got a tuner here, and then a wah pedal, let's just say here. This could be anything. This could be a boost, an overdrive, a chorus pedal, or whatever. So the point is, I always go straight into my tuner from the guitar. So you're sending the tuner the cleanest signal possible. You wouldn't want to send the tuner some signal with like chorus or wah on it because that will, you know, uh, change what's happening to the signal that the tuner is receiving. You want it to, to receive a pure signal. By the way, I have this here, no sharps, because this tuner for some reason is broken. It like won't pick up sharps. It's, it's weird, I don't know what's going on with it. Anyways, it's a little note to myself. Anyway, so you go straight into the tuner, then into any effects that you have, and then the last thing in your chain for the amp would be your noise suppression. And that's because, again, clean a signal into the tuner, anything you've got going on in the middle, and then let the suppressor clean up any noise that anything before it may have created so you send your amp the cleanest signal possible. The name of the game is just everything nice and clean, nice and noise free, everything getting the truest signal it can along in the signal chain. Think about it like that, you should have a good tone.
So you see how that was nice and clean and tight. Not a bunch of feedback in between chugs. The noise was kept down a bit, and that was still with the amp pretty cranked, you know? It, definitely a volume you could jam with other guys with, you know? So, and I wasn't getting that annoying feedback. So, from here, I wanna tell you a little bit about my history of discovering noise suppression and just how I thought about it one day and how I, it was something I wanted to tackle. And I bet it's something that you can relate to too, whether it's a problem you've been experiencing or maybe you've seen some like local shows in your neighborhood at some bar or whatever where bands are going dun dun, dun dun, feedback in between each chug. So let's get into that a little bit. So when my band, Kimura, first started gigging back around 99, 2000, we, like many young bands, had that issue. We didn't realize it at the time, but we were one of those bands where in between every dun 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 we had that annoying feedback. And we didn't really think much of it at the time. I remember we'd wa I'd watch videos of us and stuff and you'd hear that and you just thought it was part of it, you know? All the young hardcore bands had that, crazy punk rock shows, it's just part of the thing. But one day I started thinking, I'm like, why don't you hear that when you see Metallica play? Why don't you hear that when you see Slayer or big pro bands play? It's because they had the realization that I was having that day where to sound better, to take your live sound to the next level, you need noise suppression. You need to kill that feedback. You need to be able to control it. If you want the feedback, then you can have it. One of the coolest things, I remember standing on the side of the stage when Slayer was playing one time and Kerry King's guy had one of those, his tech had one of those like, I don't know if it was a Rocktron Ganiac or something like that. And he would control Kerry's feedback so that when he wanted feedback to ring out after some big solo note or, you know, getting a rain in blood, whatever, you know, he could control that. But he did not not have control of it and it would, you know, he wouldn't let it ring out whenever he wanted. So the pro bands and taking your sound up a notch, require noise suppression in a lot of areas. So I had that realization and then right around that time, again, back in Kamira's career, a new guitarist joined our band, Matt DeVries. And when he joined, part of his rig was, he had this thing called the Rocktron Hush. And it was a rack mount unit. And that was like the first time I'd ever really even seen a noise suppressor. But I was intrigued by it. I started telling him how I thought that we needed to incorporate that. I and mean, he was already on the gimmick, you know? But uh, so, but anyways, I think he eliminated that from his rig because we wanted to strip down and go smaller and just get like pedals. So we started, their first pedals, the Boss NS2s. So here we have the Boss NS2, and this is my original one. Look at how beat up that thing is. Obviously, we're missing something there, missing knobs. So these things kind of did the trick, but one thing I didn't like, and this is kind of going to be the theme of everything I'm going to talk about with these noise suppressors, is that there's just too much control, threshold, Decay. So threshold is obviously, you know, you adjust that to at which point you want it to engage to start suppressing the noise. The decay, how much is it going to let through? Is it going to cut everything? Dun, dun. Or is it going to go dun, dun? Is it going to let the signal decay a little bit? Reduction, I guess mute. Maybe if you hit this, it's just a mute. I'm not sure about that. But anyways, when you're a young band playing clubs every night in different cities, or you don't even have to be at that. It's just when your environment changes, when you don't have the same sound guy every night or the same monitor guy every night in a different size room all the time, things are constantly changing. And you don't want to have to be making adjustments to your noise suppression on the fly while playing every night. The the, the biggest thing about playing is to be able to think about nothing but playing. So you want something that you can set and forget, which the ISP decimator, one knob. I have that set there about 11 o'clock. That's where me and Matt would set it. A lot of times these top plates would fall off, so I'd put a little sticker on there. Also, I think that's glow in the dark tape so you could see, uh, you know, in a dark rig at night and stuff around 11 o'clock was the way we'd go with that. Um, but so we outgrew the Boss NS2s and then we moved we actually got a, an endorsement from Dunlap at the time. They would make guitar picks. This is again, way early on. Um, shortly after that, we went to in-tune guitar picks, but uh, Dunlap was doing um, you know, pedals and polish and uh, picks for us and stuff like that. And they hooked us up with these. These are cool little thing. The MXR line, this is called the MXR Smartgate. And we love them at first, but still too many controls, too many variables. So. After a couple years, we were introduced to the ISP Decimator. Uh, we reached an endorsement deal with ISP and they provided us with decimators for all of our touring, recording, and rehearsal needs from there on out. Uh, and they're the pedal I recommend and stand behind 100%. Now, if you go get one, I don't get anything from it. I don't care whether you do or not, other than I just simply want to share my experience and tell you that this is the best pedal I've found for the job. And this is an old version. They have newer ones too. I think it's the Decimator 2 or like the G-String or something like that. Check Sweetwater.com. Um, they have newer versions, which 
I bet, are even more accurate and transparent. And the fact that it's just one knob, that's it. Super easy to use, keeps your signal quiet and maintains sustain, no guesswork. It works like you'd expect it to every single time, and I use it for everything. So maybe it's a little bit pricier than any of these, whatever, but the fact that it's, it's just set and forget, little peace of mind, I think peace of mind's worth it every single time. And so here's a question, uh, you know, that some people are wondering, do you even need a noise gate if you're not gigging or playing loud? Maybe you just have a little practice amp, whatever. I think you probably don't need one. But the thing is, it just still cleans up your sound. All those annoying little sounds your hands make going up and down the strings or sometimes some fizz or additional hum that your amp may provide. You know, uh, there I can, I can stand in front of a full stack uh, right in front of my amp with it cranked hit my decimator and just it could just be silent. I can have my hands off the strings. I don't even have to mute them. And that's just the type of luxury. And again, peace of mind, like I was talking about, that's just nice. So I recommend having one for any situation you might get in. But if your amp has a built-in noise gate, that's probably cool enough. If you use an amp sims, that's definitely cool enough. Um, but you know, if not, or if you're gonna be gigging or jamming with dudes in a practice space, then I definitely recommend one. So Part of the reason I'm making this whole video, I, I love sharing this knowledge, is but lately I've been hearing a lot about this inexpensive $20 Behringer noise gate. Let's take a look. Now many have heard me say that I firmly believe in that you get what you pay for. So I would never even consider something like this, especially when I believe in the ISP decimator. Uh, but the decimator costs around 135 bucks and that's a little pricey for some people. You know, uh, especially for like a tactical type tool, like a noise gate versus some cool effect pedal. So I thought, why not put it to the test and see how it sounds? How does it perform next to something that is almost seven times the price? So let's get it plugged in and find out. So this thing is brand new. I just ordered it specifically for this video. And afterwards, I don't really need it. Let's, let's hope it's good, let's hope it's cool. Afterwards, some lucky guy or gal over in my Patreon community is going to win this bad boy. Got to figure out how I'm going to set that up, but I'm just going to give it away to someone over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel and be a part of little things like that, please consider coming on board. Of course, I'm going to have the link in the description where you can check out my Patreon campaign. Okay, so do I need to throw a battery in this? I'm guessing I probably do. I don't even see the battery compartment. Let's see here. Are we going to get lucky? We're not. All right, I will be back in a moment after I pop the battery in this. Okay, battery installed. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna run both these and check them out back to back here. Okay. Guitar plugged in. So got a mute and reduction same as the other one before I'm gonna guess that the mute is just means when you hit this it's like kind of like a kill switch um, so I'm gonna go to reduction we're gonna start at just noon be honest these controls feel pretty cheap this whole plastic thing feels a little bit cheap especially compared to the ISP which again is built like a tank and I'm not an ISP salesman here I just like I said I only tell you guys I only get stoked about stuff that I believe in I believe in this trying this out here let's see what happens so ISP is off Turning the amp on. I'm sorry that it gets noisy here with the amp on, but that's what you get with a tube amp. Okay, so this is the Behringer NR300 on ISP off. Not bad. Let's, uh, let's hit that threshold up more and just see what happens. So I feel like it's letting through um, the, just you're hearing like the springs inside the guitar kind of resonate. Let's max this out, see what happens. Maxed out. So not a lot of feedback, but still hearing that. You hear that resonance from the, uh, the springs in the back? Bridge, turn this off, ISP. Much tighter. Here, how tight that is. Okay, back to this guy, and that's only at 11 o'clock. Let's 
Let's see if that mute does in fact just mute it. Yet. So it's kind of like a kill switch with that in the mute. Back to reduction. Again, we got that all the way up there. Actually, if we turn the decay all the way down, but have the threshold all up, let's see what that does. So that kills a little, everything a little bit more, a little quicker. Threshold back down. It's actually, it's actually a little better. Maybe I'm just don't have this thing dialed in quite right. Take, just spend a little time with it. Well, I'll tell you what, it ain't bad. Just taking some time, spend some time with this, get it dialed in for your guitar, for your amp. That's what you gotta do. Let me kill this. Ugh. Amp killed, test done. So, like I was saying, every guitar and amp combination is gonna be different and how you dial that in is gonna be different. Again, I don't like having all that flexibility, you know, unless you're just gonna be in one environment all the time, then it's easy to kind of set and forget. But if you're moving around, do different things, you know, even if you have a jam spot and you guys switch where your amps are every once in a while or, you know, stuff like that, you wanna be able to just have something that you can rely on so that you only have to focus on your guitar playing and not have to focus on anything else. At least that's what I worry about all the time, stripping things down and make a minimal, I like a meat and potatoes type rig that I don't have to worry about, don't have to worry Worry about stuff breaking or going wrong or just you know switching on a nightly basis that's how i think about it you don't have to think about it that way i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it was helpful maybe it will help you with your decision making process about getting a noise gate not getting a noise gate whether you need one or not how you're going to dial it in seeing it here in a uh i was going to say a real world situation but kind of a weird situation i don't know so thank you guys appreciate you watching uh you check out my guitar dvd if you want more guitar plan my tone crate custom Kemper profile pack is cool. All those classic Camaro tones, plus so many more videos on the channel, guitar lessons, my everything you love show, stuff like that. Stick around, make sure you're subscribed if you're not. Biggest thing you could do to help right now is share this video with somebody who may enjoy it or one of my other videos that you think somebody would get something out of. That's what I'm here for, I'm here to help. Cheers, Rob Arnold signing off. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next one.